But of course, commenting on the big news of the day as well, Mike Mazzullo, he's the Secretary of the Home Affairs Department, a story today in the nine newspapers around leaked text messages, uh, and messages, well, encrypted ones, WhatsApp and Signal as well, so texting, if not a normal text message service, between him and Scott Briggs, a Liberal power broker. Uh, nothing that he has done that's illegal, for example, but the question mark is around whether it was appropriate with some of his urgings on who should be appointed to various roles and so on. And the Prime Minister there did say he's now stood down, Mike as well. Let's bring our senior political reporter, Trudy McIntosh, on mm. that news. So he was asked to stand down and he's agreed to stand down. Mm. But interesting the way it was phrased there by Anthony Albanese. Yeah, that he didn't fall on his own sword willingly, Tom, that he had to be asked today after this uh, bombshell uh, revelations on the front page of the nine newspapers, this uh, string of messages between the now the now stood aside uh, Secretary of the Home Affairs oh, Department and uh, Scott Briggs. He's a close confidant at the time to Malcolm Turnbull when he was PM, Scott Morrison as PM. Interestingly, the Prime Minister there saying he stood down whilst they're doing this review and that's going to be done by Linnell Briggs. She's a uh, former Royal Commissioner in charge of the Aged Care Royal Commission at the time. This was earlier in the day referred to the Australian Public Service Commission to look at whether it was in fact appropriate for um, Mr Pizzullo to be in such close communications with this Liberal Party power broker at times appearing to try and influence who would actually be the minister in his department. He said on one of these text exchange that they want a right winger in place. He wanted someone strong on border security. Curious to see as well the timing of that. Peter Dutton had been asked just minutes earlier whether he believed uh, things were proper, right for Mr Bazzullo to stay in home affairs, Tom, and he says if the PM didn't have confidence in him that he should say that publicly. Well, we've seen that action taken now. And Mr Bazzullo, uh, a long-serving bureaucrat here in Canberra, he served both Labor and coalition governments, now stood aside in the wake of these text messages. Yeah, so as you say, juxtaposing those news conferences, Peter Dutton didn't want to comment on the texts themselves and said, mm. you know, that inquiry can sort of run its course, but defended Mike Pizzullo in terms of how he had always encountered him as a secretary of the department, the department he worked for for many years, or the department he was minister mm. of, I should say, uh, saying always professional conduct, but Anthony Albanese now, um, you know, making it clear he'd been asked to stand aside. So stand aside doesn't mean he's gone, but um, mm. not in that position while this inquiry happens. Expeditious as well. I mean... Can't run for too long, can it, if there's, if there's any chance of him being reinstated? Because how long yeah. can you be in that sort of limbo for? And it is very rare to see when people get stood aside time in politics. It may not be fair for them. They may not feel like it's right, but it's very rare to see people come back from this sort of thing. Once they're stood aside, it becomes mm. a political problem for a government and they need to try and solve the political issue here, which is front page stories showing the extent to which their department secretary, they're meant to be impartial, providing fearless and frank advice to government. And you can see in these text exchange on multiple occasions where he's attempted uh, from the nature of the text, we have to go on what they're published in the papers that he's attempted mm. to influence uh, and, and disparage it sometimes too, uh, members of the senior members at the time of the government, disparaging remarks made about Julie Bishop, uh, Maurice Payne, George Brandis, often targeted, it seems, to more moderate coalition ministers at the time, Tom, but around the time of that leadership spill of, against Malcolm Turnbull with Scott Morrison coming in with that text message saying that he would prefer to have Peter Dutton as his minister because he believed he would be uh, the strongest when it comes to to um, protecting Australia's borders. Yeah, so it's not as if there's, um, you know, an illegality or um, wrongdoing mm. in the sense of um, the, the, the normal sort of sense we understand it to be, but as you say, it's to do with what he should be doing in his role. And you make the point, this is it. We've got no, no reason to doubt the report, but the nature of it is their messages no. from, from WhatsApp and from Signal um, and that means, I suppose, you know, if there was no veracity to them, we, we probably would have heard that by now, right? So the fact that Mike Pozzullo yeah. agrees to stand down, um, we don't have the statement, but we don't... He's not refuting the nature have, of the text, you know, you'd imagine. Then, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah.
The other point, Tom, oh, I would point out here is there has been yeah, a real yeah, drip, on. drip, drip against home affairs uh, over the last six months or so. There's been a whole series of stories that have been uh, casting a bad light, uh, to say the very least, about the dealings inside home affairs when it comes to those contracts for offshore detention centres. There's been a sense within government that there is a tension between uh, the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, and her departmental secretary, Mike Pizzullo. So now with him stood aside, potentially a chance for a... Um, a fresh start, really, for the minister and her department in what's been perceived to be this level of tension between the two of them. Trudy, thank you. I'll have more on that through the afternoon. We'll